What's going on everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're here for a new Madden 24 realistic rebuild of the team that holds the number two overall pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, the Washington Commanders. I'm going to stall just a little bit during this intro as well because I just literally posted a poll on my Twitter at PapaXC4. Give it a follow if you don't already do so. As to which quarterback we should select at number two because there is quite a polarizing discussion going on right now as to who quarterback two is in the 2024 NFL Draft. I would say going into this rebuild, when I said I'm going to do the Commanders, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to go Jaden Daniels. Now, Jaden Daniels is not my quarterback, too. Personally, in my opinion, Drake May is my quarterback, too. And if I was the Commanders, I'd pick number two, and Caleb Williams goes one to the Bears, Drake May would be my quarterback. So I just put it a poll on Twitter. Whoever is leading by the end of this usually seven, eight-minute intro is who we're going to draft for this rebuild. And you know what? If we go Jaden Daniels, we end up drafting Drake May. That gives us another Commanders rebuild that we can come back and do after the draft has completed. But that's just kind of my two cents. Also, very quick update. Bengal has updated his 2024 draft class. Uh, I believe it's post-combine, so go check that out. I just downloaded a couple days ago. And I've also, in hand, updated my 2025 draft class. Did a full-on revamp on the weekend. It is fully up to date. I'll show you that a little bit later when we get into year two here. But uh, all you gotta do is just re-download the original files that we already had. They're fully up to date. Go check that out. Uh, I know myself and Bengal put a lot of time into these draft classes. So taking a quick look at the Commanders roster. Obviously, as an Eagle fan, I like to pick fun of the uh, NFC's counterparts. And I'm gonna say outright that Commanders are always gonna be just an annoying team. Like they, they could be, you could, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be difficult to beat, no matter really what their roster looks like on paper. But for me to try to get some of these moves in, because like these guys here weren't all available in free agency in Madden like they were in real life, it's almost like you get Mariota, Austin Eckler, Biotis, even though you have Ricky Stromberg, you pay like a decent chunk of money to Allegretti, who's a 66 overall, which is a brutal contract. You bring in Zach Ertz on the defensive side, I, you know, a little bit better, Clellan Farrell. Dorrance Armstrong, Frankie Louvu, you get Bobby Wagner, you bring in Jeremy Chin, which is probably one of the few moves I like, but you let Cam Curl go, you let Kendall Fuller go. It feels like, and I made a tweet about that, it feels like they just simmed free agency. Yet you had it so like computer bidding was on, so you wouldn't just sim it and get nobody. But like the, the moves they made are, are very surprising. This roster is, um, you know, with all due respect to the good players that they have, established good players, Scary Terry's a duck. Brian Robinson has developed into more than a role player. Cosme's kind of hit, moving from tackle to guard now. Jahan Dodson, you're still optimistic about the upside there. On the defensive side, Payne and Allen, you know what you get. You have Emmanuel Forbes, you get the Canadian, Ben St. Juice, Jean Martin. You know, hope Forbes and Martin can have stronger seasons in their second year in the league. I mean, Chin and Louvre aren't bad players poaching them from the Carolina Panthers, but they still were, you know, not necessarily game changers. They didn't turn that Panthers defense around. You got Bobby Wagner on a one-year deal. What's he got left in the tank? Jalman Davis, still question mark about his development. Forrest is solid. But it's just, this is a tough rebuild. And I don't want to disrespect the commanders by saying, come next year's Madden, Madden 25, regardless of who they draft at quarterback, they're going to be one of the difficult, better, pure rebuild teams because of the state of the roster. But I think they're probably going to be a bottom, bottom 10 roster at minimum, if not closer to bottom five roster, which... In regards to Madden, in, in regards to franchise kind of rebuild, that's good. That's a good thing because they're going to be a popular team uh, that you're going to see getting rebuilt all over the Madden 25 space. But a lot of work to go in. We are going to be drafting a quarterback. I'm not going to be punting on quarterback going for, I don't know who else you could even consider them drafting. Uh, you know, Joe Alt. They need tackle. I'll tell you right now, uh, for my focus scouting, it was all offensive tackle. I like Braden Daniels coming out of Utah, but he's not going to be our, our starting tackle. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, so I'm hoping that we get someone to slip out of the first round, that we can draft a plug-and-play tackle to pair with our quarterback. But, you know, if I, again, look at the positives. B, uh, Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler's not a brutal one-two punch at running back. Scary Terry, Jahan Dotson, wide receiver. There's upside there. Cosme, Biotish, find a way to get Stromberg on the field just to maximize that dead trade and ceiling. Probably I'm going to play him over, uh, you know, Allegretti, I'm being honest with you. Like, we have some pieces in the interior. We need to get some tackles. Need to get a young upside tight end. Um, defensively, I'm optimistic that D-line, you know, we might need to get a D-end, but I'd like to see Dorrance Armstrong, him, Payne, and Allen be guys that we can rely and count on for this whole rebuild. Uh, Bobby Wagner's only here on a one-year deal. We'll be able to kick in Luvu, get a three-year contract, get a nice bag. Luvu and Jamin Davis, long-term at linebacker. 
that could work. Jeremy Chin, four. Sejus, Forbes, Martin. Like, there's enough young talent at this secondary that we might not have to splash anything in terms of big first-round, second-round picks, big free agency signings in that secondary room if these guys develop. We get a nice roll in terms of a dev trick. Get St. Juice and or Derek Force off that normal dev, up their ceilings just a little bit for the you know the the scope of a five-year rebuild. You know, uh, we might get a decent roll there in the secondary. Don't have to spend any money. And on the defensive side, it's only getting an edge rusher. So there's a way that this could spin nicely. There's a way that this could spin on nicely. You can see on the top, I kind of messed up Dan Quinn. I didn't want to go recreate it again. So that's uh, alternate universe Dan Quinn. The good news is for this rebuild, Dan Quinn, obviously for playbooks, defensive gear, the Dallas Cowboys. Offensively, they brought in Cliff Kingsbury. And I don't know of, I just, maybe I'm, I'm blanking right now this morning. But it, Cliff Kingsbury had the air rate when he was uh, at Arizona. Couldn't think of a single offense that has air rate. That would be air rate. You can't just get that playbook. So just to keep it simple, I gave them the Dallas offense as well. Just because Dan Quinn, Dallas offense, Dallas defense. So from a sim standpoint, we should be very, very, if you've seen any of Dallas in Madden 24, very, 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 very cheesy, very, very competitive in this rebuild. All right, we're going to call the vote right now. Uh, it's only been 11 minutes. Maybe it's not enough for a scope. Again, whatever quarterback we don't use, if they end up drafting in real life, because it seems like it could easily go either way, we're just going to run it back. So that's good news. If your commander's training, like, oh, I didn't want Drake May. I want Jane Daniels or vice versa. We got you covered. But in 11 minutes, 300 votes, 51 to 49, razor thin. We're going with Jaden Daniels. As the quarterback of the future for LSU. Again. Oh my god. Literally as I just said that. It went 50 to 49. Even closer. But I'm calling it right now. If we got to run it back with Drake May. We'll definitely run it back with Drake May. We got a real nice jersey swap of Jaden Daniels for a thumbnail. So that's good. I'm happy with this. And honestly in my mind. And this is kind of what I was thinking. When I was like I'm going to do the commanders. They'll probably go Jaden Daniels. The easy pick seems Drake May, and they're not a franchise that does the easy thing. So let's go. Jaden Daniels, potentially, debatably, robbed of the Heisman Trophy last year at LSU. Put up ridiculous numbers, like 50-some touchdowns. Was elite, was ridiculous. You are now here in Washington, and you're going to be the man that's trying to make this team relevant again. All right, now we're in the second round. This is where the fun begins. We got pick two and pick nine. So with these selections, ooh, that's getting Jaden Daniels' teammate at LSU. We just don't need a – I mean, do we? Do we not? I feel like we have so many holes. Getting a third wide receiver would be surplus required. We need a tackle. And look at the tackles that are available. My God, we didn't get a good roll either. Pretty good athlete there. Sua Maria. We got Patrick Paul. A pass block, B run block. Also pretty good athlete. Have his brother on the team. I also feel like we can wait. I think either, both those guys are going to be available. Could go Graham Barton. Another guy that's been able to play some tackle in the league. No one knows if he's going to play. Yeah, that actually might be our pick. He's probably best lineman available. Um... Could go D end, right? We got Dorrance Armstrong, but the other side, Clem Farrell's more of a, a, a you know one-year rental. Someone like Braylon Trice might have a little more upside. Feel good, obviously, about our D tackles. Feel decent about our linebackers. But if we can get like an edge rusher, Chop Robinson's still there. That could be a really good move. He's probably the best player available. I'm thinking we go Chop Robinson, freak athlete for Dan Quinn. Give him a kind of Micah Parsons type. And then hopefully a Patrick Paul, Graham Barton, someone that can play tackle is going to be available like there next. But look at the athleticism. Freak athlete. Get the dev trade as well. All right, pick nine. Best lineman available. And we have Patrick Paul. Oh, Graham Barton's God. God damn. All right. It's good. You know, it had to happen. I don't know if we're going to. I know Barton has the dev trade. But we'll bring in a family member of a member already on the Commanders. Patrick Paul. Yes, we get the dev trait as well. Let's go. Let's grab a Canadian here. Zach Ertz. 
One year rental. In fact, Theo Johnson here, elite athlete. First in the 40 yard dash, vert, freak across the board. 6'6, 94 jumping, 87 speed. We can utilize that. We got a wide receiver that is falling a little bit of the first round. We're looking for competition at wide receiver three. Maybe some upside. We have Tez Walker out of UNC. B, deep out running, C, catching, but brings a great athletic profile. Four, three, seven speed. Top five in pretty much all the testing categories. So that's rock and roll with the athlete. All right, so take a look at our draft recap. And, you know, pretty great pulls all throughout this draft. We got Cedric Gray, 71 normal linebacker. Depth, developmental piece. Can learn a thing or two from Bobby Wagner. Tez Walker, great value in the third round, 73. Even though it was a normal depth, that adds immediate nice depth there. Uh, we got Theo Johnson at tight end. Again, another guy very similar to Gray. Good athletic profile. Not have to play probably year one, but can learn from an established veteran for Theo Johnson. That is Zach Ertz. Patrick Paul is going to be a day one starter for us at left tackle 73 with the hidden dev. Chop Robinson, I'm going to play him at defensive end on the other side of Dorrance Armstrong. So he's going to be a day one starter. I don't know what his rating potentially is going to go to. He's 74 right now. But we make him, I believe we've got to make him left defensive end. Hopefully that rating goes up. If not, stays the same. And it does up to a 75, which is huge. And of course quarterback one of the future we hope if you're a commanders fan all 13 of you Jaden daniels 76 hidden dev let's go so because a lot of the big time additions commanders got in free agency are useless and we had a good draft slight changes to the offense patrick paul's gonna start left tackle we're gonna go theo johnson to start at tight end Jaden daniels at quarterback tez walker's gonna be wide receiver three on the defensive side, Chop Robinson's going to play the on the other side of Dorrance Armstrong. Everything else remains the same for the specialist. I had to make the tough decision. Bobby Wagner's only here for a year, so he will play. But when we go into nickel defense, Luvu's going to be here long-term. We need to get him some tackles, see if we can get him off that normal dev. Jamin and Davis are going to go Chop Robinson, Dorrance Armstrong in the pass rush. Ja Martin in the slot. Jahan Dotson in the slot. I was thinking maybe we put Scary Terry there. I'm not too sure. I haven't yet... Really played a lot with the Dallas Cowboys sim play. Like, I don't know if the slot wide receiver's guy that eats. I assume it is because CD Lamb, you know, not, again, we're not shooting. Hey, you know what? We're watching as a commander fan. We're Eagle fan. We all just laugh at the fact that, yeah, CD Lamb is, yeah, he's great. He plays slot. He goes up against the easier matchups. So uh, I will say, though, we do find out Jahan Dotson. And the slot in this Cowboys playbook is where, you know, you're going to get fed the most. We'll probably move to Scary Terry in there long term just so he reflects that he's the wide receiver one of our team. But cautiously optimistic. That uh, the playbook is in the right spot. That this team is going to be competitive from the get-go for the next five years. All right, so then week five, we get a very interesting scenario here. A breakout for Jaden Daniels. One or few interceptions, 350 scrimmage yards, four total touchdowns. So I assume that means he's on a star dev. So we're looking to make the jump to superstar. Weird, because he hasn't got you know any offensive player of the week. So usually you get one of those before you get the breakout scenario. Oh, please be Jaden Daniels. That would be sick if we get him a dev. Ah, uh, it's Drake May. Oh, that's like adding insult to injury. A pick six for Jerry Beach hit. The quarterback we didn't pick gets player of the week when we had a breakout. I mean, there's a chance. There's a chance he did enough. I mean, we got 38 points. I'm going to guess not. But uh, let's see. Any thoughts on the play? You get a jazz. Yeah, usually not the... Uh... Yeah. Damn. So let's look at some contracts. $70 million. So we can pretty much keep any and all. So let's get Sam Cosby on a four-year deal. Honestly, with his rating, knowing that he is a tackle, he's played tackle, played tackle in college, I think the, the smart move is eventually just to move him back to right tackle. Uh, but obviously, we need to get a suitable replacement before that happens. We're going to get Derek Forrest on a four-year deal, keep him a strong safety, really hope he gets a dev trait role. I'm sure a little Canadian bias here and try to keep Ben at St. Juice at corner. Another player, we're hoping, can get a dev trait role. Look at the rest of the upcoming free agents. You know, I think it's fairly obvious Bobby Wagner is a one-year rental. We'll pick up the fifth-year option for Jahan Dotson. We're going to be rolling into free agency. about $50 million of cap room. That's enough to make a big splash or two if the players are there. All right, we got another breakout scenario off of our bye week. Tough matchup against the undefeated Baltimore Ravens. Hopefully, it's Derek Forrest. Oh, it's actually Jeremy Chin. Looking to make the jump from star to superstar. He's only on a short-term contract as well. So, I don't know if he hits his depth or got to pay him. I thought he was only on a one-year. I didn't see his name there on the renegotiations. Hmm... Interesting. Yep, we get absolutely shit pumped. I will say, if you go look at my tweets, I've clowned on the commanders a lot. I said the one, there's two signings that I like. Two signings that I was like, you know what, that's good business. 
for the commanders. Frankie Luvu and Jeremy Chen. And Jeremy Chen paid the immediate dividends here in this rebuild. Superstar dev, let's go! Right, we got another breakout scenario. Hopefully it's Jeremy Chen and we just get an X Factor out of the way. No, but it's Drick Forrest. Him and Ben St. Juice were really the two that I wanted to um, hope get a role here of a dev trait. Drick Forrest on that normal dev. Same with St. Juice. And Forrest has an opportunity here. As we're 6 and 8, respectful 6 and 8, we're bottom dwellers in the East. You know, we're, we're, yeah, we're trying our best here. Come on. The dev traits are hitting. Dan Quinn's getting the most out of these boys on defense. And we also hit on the trench boost, which in my opinion is the best in-season scenario that you can get for your whole team. Because look, we didn't allow a sack in this game, even though we got the shit kicked out of us. Everyone on the O-line gets 10k XP. Always, always. Sometimes people just sim right to the end or you, you don't interact. See trench boost, do it. All right, end of year one, it's, uh, it's rough. Definitely did not get the Dallas Cowboys sim defense I thought we were going to get. And it's Dan Quinn, defensive head coach. But the only offense, passing offense, top 10. So Jaden Daniels played well. And I think if one player had to play well for our first little introduction, we're going to ignore the fact Drake May's up there. <laughs> no one saw Drake May. Look at Scary Terry, second in the league, 1,500 yards, 12. I see, there's some good here for sure. And also we found out, Scary Terry, if he's putting like that, he's outside wide receiver. We didn't put him in the slot. So the outside wide receiver one can eat. Jaden Daniels, 4,200 yards, 27 touchdowns, nine picks. You know, four, almost 500 yards on the ground, another four times. I mean, that's a respectable, realistic, he doesn't suck in his first year type stat line. So I'm fine with that. Robinson under 1,000 yards, but 19 rushing touchdowns. That's pretty huge. Scary Terry, 8, 89 catches, 1,500 yards, 12 tutties, 9 and 7 for John Dotson. That's fine. Tez Walker, the rookie, 700 yards, 700 yards for the other rookie, Theo Johnson. I mean, I'm happy with those numbers, especially if they stay consistent. Luvu and Jamin Davis, both over 100 tackles, 9.5 sacks, 18 TFLs for Dorrance Armstrong, 20 TFLs, 9 sacks. John Allen, the rookie chop, Robinson, 66 tackles, 12 TFLs, 7.5 sacks. Deron Payne getting after it. So, like, hey, the guys that need to get after it, get after it. Secondary numbers, not the hottest. I mean, two picks for Manuel Forbes, not brutal. St. Jude with a pick, Forrest with a pick, Chin with a pick. John Barton with a pick. So I guess everyone got one. But I have seen, especially with the Dallas Cowboy defense, that's one. Of, that's like the one defense you want to see interception with because they get them in real life. Deron Bland, Trayvon Diggs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so a little disappointed there. But look at that. In his rookie campaign, Jaden Daniels making the MVP shortlist. Interesting. Offensive player of the year is the Cooper Cup. Scary Terry in the top five. Defense player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. With John Allen making the short list. Their offensive rookie of the year goes to Jay Nails. Beat no Drake May. Hell yeah. I don't know how we did that, but we're going to take that for a potential dev trade scenario. Get him off that star dev. Uh, Chop Robinson unfortunately loses out on defensive rookie of the year to Kamari Lassiter. Uh, then kind of looking through the rest of these awards. I don't think we're going to have anybody. We unfortunately do not. But still pretty happy with how everything went in year one. And we also were shitty enough that we're not going to have a you know super high pick. We're going to be able to get... A decent player. Back-to-back -back drafts. Looking at Jaden Dan. We're going to spend the point here. We're going right into Scrambler. We're going to lean into his background here as a dual threat. And we did get the Superstar Dev. That's huge. Look at the rest of the team. I thought maybe with the 19 touchdowns, Brian Roberts had a shot. But he did have under 1,000 yards, which is a little bit of a tough ass. Patrick Paul was hitting Dev. It got unveiled as a star. Unfortunately, we lost a star Dev on Jahan Dotson. Really? Hmm. That's interesting. Thought he had like at least like a maintain your star dev type year. That is uh, very harsh. But I mean, again, going with realistic rebuild settings, you're going to have uh, extreme regression. Austin Eckler lost his dev trait as well. On the defensive side, in terms of dev traits gained, uh, Frankie Louvo goes from normal to a star. Obviously, in season, Direct Force and Jeremy Chin both going up dev traits. Chop Robinson was hidden dev, pops as a star. So, nothing too crazy on the defensive side of the ball. But, man, be a little harsh there for John Dye. I think that should have still been a star. He was almost, what, 1,000 yards? I'll tell you now, now that he lost the dead trade, I think we're not going to pick up the fifth-year option. I don't think that'd be smart business right now. We'd probably get him at a much lower number just renegotiating a new contract. So, I think we're going to do that. Go to the free agency. Uh, there's just really one big fish, and that is Hufang got strong safety, but I have enough respect for Derek Forrest and obviously Jeremy Chin, who's just gone up to a superstar that uh, just kind of would cloud the, the room a little bit. I don't think we need to add anybody there. Again, JOK always looks like a top target, but he's classified as an edge rusher, so who is paying that? 
So ultimately, I think it's just going to be best for us to take our massive salary cap and roll it over for a better year. I just quickly want to use this to plug the updated 2025 draft class. I uh, went in, did a full update. Really, I, I feel good about everything outside of the DBs just because I was kind of going off PFFs, like returning players to college, and they didn't have corners or safeties done yet. So I might have missed someone, but I still feel pretty good about the room. We added Carson Beck. Uh, I still decided to keep Arch Manning and some of like the guys that are would be underclassmen for this year. Just keep the fun players there. Um, I'll say this, though. This is going off. This is not the order that they are in terms of base rating. I'll say that. Uh, with Shador Sanders going all the way down there. Um, but yeah, we updated there. We updated the running backs here. Full on buff. Bumped up Ollie Gordon, who had an insane year. Donovan Edwards was added to the class at wide receiver. Uh, McMillan, who's an insane prospect of Arizona. He's actually a guy that I think we're going to try to target here because of the regression to Jahan Dotson. Wide receivers kind of slowly bumping up there in terms of needs. Uh, Buka from Ohio State uh, has been added to the class. Tez Johnson has been added. We've tried, I think, my best, just because transfer portal is insane, to get everybody that has switched schools to update to the correct school. I think we're good on that front. Upgrade the tight ends. Not a lot of movement on the offensive line. Tate Ratledge was added. Um, Donovan Jackson of Ohio State was added as the top player at that spot. Cornelius out of Oregon. Monheim from USC were also bumped up big time, as it looks like they're going to be in the discussion. James Pierce got a gigantic buff. Uh, a lot of people are saying that he could be the first quarterback off the board in next year's draft class. So put some respect on his name. I try my best to, to not be biased against guys that left Florida. There's a couple big dogs. Umam Malayan and uh, Baby ETN have left my beloved Florida Gators for different teams. And I tried my best not to make it personal when I was adjusting the draft class there. We got Jack Sawyer from Ohio State. Uh, he's a big name that was added. Uh, Mason Grand. The couple guys that you returned from Michigan that are standing Michigan defense, I decided to give them a pretty nice bump. But D tackles look good. Uh, we got Abdul Carter, Trey Moore. But hey, you want to just you want to start getting ahead on some guys that had crazy. Look at Trey Moore. I think it was UTSA. Insane numbers. And now he's going to Texas. He's definitely going to be one to watch. Uh, we got Barrett Carter, new linebacker one, added to my draft class. Uh, this side stays, right side stays about the same. Corner room stays about the same. Uh, we were pretty good on that front. Uh, Malachi Starks there. Uh, update the safety room. Caleb Dallas, when he stops. For whatever reason, they just don't let Shador. Or Shiloh. Shiloh is is inappropriate, apparently. I think that's the only name that's all messed up right now still. But ultimately, I feel real good about this updated draft class. All you got to do, if you've downloaded my file before, is just go re-look up the exact same details and re-download the file. It's the same thing, and it'll refresh for you guys to utilize. All right, got to wait till pick 15 of the first round of the 2025 NFL Draft. And really, I mean, it's tough. I, I, I think we go wide receiver. McMillan's still at Arizona. Three A's and a B. We don't really have needs. Wide receiver, right? I mean, we can't give up Jahan Dotson. Still a young player. Could easily just regain that dev trait. But I'm starting to be a little worried about the wide receiver's not named Scary Tay. What is their ceiling? So if we go get a big dog there, that'd be great. Corner's another need. And we do have our pick of corner, but I've used Will Johnson and Benjamin Morrison so many times in rebuilds. I, I need corner almost every year. We've done a rebuild for 2025, and we've never been bad enough to get Travis Hunter. We're going to get it eventually, right? One of these years, I'm just going to say, one of these rebuilds, I'm just going to say, F it, I'm getting Travis Hunter. But I think given the players that are available, we're going to Buka there as well, but I mean, not nearly as good letter grades. And it's funny, man, because I, like, a lot of times, like the last couple of rebuilds I've been using my class, it's been forever since I touched them up. So I really forgot the ratings. I forgot the ratings, forgot the dev. I remember a couple of the special hidden dev traits a little bit later on, but generally I forget the ratings. I, these are fresh in my head, and it's funny. Like, I'll just say right now, Abuka, you look at that, you go CBFC, like, oh, that guy's a bust. Like, no! I know for a fact that he is not maybe not the best guy available, but he's still a very good draft pick in the first round, and you would look at that and be like, this guy sucks ass. Like, no, I'm pretty sure he's like 73, 74 dev trait. So, it just goes to show that, like, once you learn the behind the scenes, it helps a little bit, helps you understand, like, people say, why do you draft so well? I think editing and creating my own draft class... And understanding like what some of the letter grades truly mean to a base rating, it definitely makes it a little easier. Either way, we're gonna go with McMillan here. Three A's and a B at six five. Not a prolific athlete by any means. 
but he's definitely one of the top wide receivers in all of college football. All right, second round, I'm going to go Tate Ratledge because by drafting a guard, it is going to allow us... Ooh, no dev trade. It's going to allow us to put Cosme back to tackle, which is, I think, big picture what's going to be best for the O-line going forward. All right, so take a look at our draft recap. Feel real good. I mean, hey, I'll tell you right now, first thing we know about my draft class is that they're maybe a little stingier, harder to find the studs. And the fact that we got a bunch of picks and almost all of them are 70 or pretty damn close plus is huge. We got a 71 punter in the sixth round, Crenshaw out of Florida, 66 safety, 69 linebacker, depth, Nye Black, the Alabama transfer at tight end, 70. So that gives some good depth behind Theo Johnson. We get a height, weight, speed, freak. All these guys are normal devs. Colby Taylor out of Wyoming, 6'4", 94 speed, 94 acceleration. Uh, we got Jay Higgins, regarding one of the better linebackers returning to college football. At Iowa, he's 70, just a normal dev. Ratledge, 73. He's likely going to kick to right guard, which allows us to kick Sam Cosme out to right tackle. And the big dog is McMillan there, 75, with a ridiculous six foot five body frame, 205 pounds. Uh, adds a lot. Gives us a different dimension to our receiving room. All right, we got a cool wide receiver mentorship. I love this to be like Scary Terry taking McMillan under his wing. And it's Scary Terry taking wide receiver four, Tez Walker interesting can we go with the rookie with the hidden dev please like i don't want to i don't want to be uh, ungrateful to whatever free boost we're about to get but uh maybe the guy that's the rookie would be the better guy to you know make your understudy all right well pretty good turnaround we're five and two right now we're coming off two weekly performances Jaden daniels and brian robinson so the offense firing on all cylinders here in year two so that is what we need. I mean, again, we're Dallas offense, Dallas playbook, so I did not expect, honestly, to even have the struggles we had year one. I was expecting more of this, but better late than ever. Look at our contracts. $138 million billion. So we're going to be able to pretty much keep whomever we'd want. And I think uh, there's a pretty clear map to follow. i first get Jahan Dodson. Definitely want to continue his development, uh, even if he goes down to a wide receiver three with McMillan. That's still very reasonable. We got John Allen wants to stay on. Let's see if we can get him on a two-year. Ooh, okay. That's a little more money. I thought we'd be able to get that one easily across the line. Now, a little upset that everyone else is kind of not a lot of interest, so we're going to have to overpay. Can we get Scary Terry on just this regular one? Okay, he needs a little bit more money. Same with John Allen. Confident we can get those ones across the line. Jeremy Chin, who developed up to a superstar last year. Let's lock him in. For the remainder of the rebuild, three years. Brian Robinson, lock him in for the remainder of the rebuild, three years. It's always the best, man. You get a little disheartened, a little disappointed when you see no good roles in free agency. But then you have like eight guys you want to keep. And really, you could just keep throwing money at them. Money is no issue. So we'll come back. Probably a million on each one of these contracts should get them over the line. Remember we were five and two? That was... A long time ago, we finished 9-8, and eight, missed the playoffs. The only thing good is Jaden Daniels. So, I mean, again, just another year that we're just going to continue to, you know, build around him. He's playing well. If he's gonna, he's the face of this rebuild, he's playing well. Third in the, the league in yards and touchdowns, so I'm confident there's going to be... I mean, we might be... Yeah, usually, that was a cutoff in last year's bat, unless it's changed. If you were top three in passing yards and touchdowns, you were going to get the dev trade. So I think there's a shot we get him up to an X factor. Maybe that's what we need to take this offense to another gear. Rushing offense, I mean, it just is what it is. We're, we're a passing heavy team, so we're not going to have crazy numbers there. McMillan has our rookie, 98 catches, 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns. Scary Terry, 12 and 8, 8 and 7 for Johnson, 6 and 3 for Jahan. Take that. Defensively, Jamin Davis over 100 tackles, sacks. Ugh, not great. Seven and a half John Allen, seven from Luvu, five and a half Chop Robinson, five and a half to Ron Payne, three picks. Emmanuel Forbes leading the team. Take a look, MVP Mahomes. Jane Daniels making the top five. McMillan wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's it. Okay. I mean, a lost year. Five and two. Anytime you're five and two, anytime you're looking, you're like, holy shit, here we go. We're putting on together. And you still just collapse and burn. And we won the last two in a row. So there was a stretch there, but we went like one and seven. One and six, whatever it is. That, you know, you can't have that and expect to make the playoffs. All right, well, Packers defeat the Bengals in the Super Bowl. At least it's not like a Chiefs-Cowboys, so that's always kind of cool. Looking at our squad. Yes, sir. McMillan, rookie of the year, goes from star up to superstar. 
Theo Johnson goes from normal up to a star. But most importantly, on the offensive side of the ball, Jaden Daniels, third in yards, third in touchdowns, gets himself an X Factor dev trait. So we've come a long way, starting as. Ooh, I'll tell you right now that we got to get off that. What ability is that? But this way, as soon as I don't know, know like the logo, probably a shit ability. Brick wall. Do not want that. Um, probably an escape artist. Running gun. Let's give him running gun for now. Um. Defense. I mean, no one really played well on the defense, so I'm not. I'm expecting dev trait regression on the defensive side of the ball. And the fact of the matter is, I mean, direct force up to a star dev. There's no regression at all, so that's that's a win, I guess, considering how underwhelming they were. All right, we got one last chance. These negotiations have been drawn out between Jonathan Allen and Scary Terry, so we got Jonathan Allen signed in. Honestly, Scary Terry's a big one. Like, if we can't get him. I think I'd be probably leaning towards franchise tag if need be. But we'll, we should be able to get him four years, 84 mil. There we go. Don't worry about him. We still have an absolute war chest for free agency this year. Man, brutal free agency, man. I'm out of just casting a line, hoping that there's a big fish in the pond. And there's a bunch of old retired fish that should be retired. Extra retired. Double old folks home. I mean, Charverius Ward, but there's no interest. So I'd have to severely overpay to get him to join my team. We're good at safety. Just brutal. Give me someone good. All right, to so go to the draft, I mean, we're just in this weird spot, man, where it's like, who who can we get to, like, improve the team? Free agency's been a shit show. Our team's not really bad anywhere. So I prioritized DN and corner here, and I found this guy. This guy's worth talking about. Look at the frame. 6'6", 270, A power, A tackle, C block shed. Also comes elite strength, great speed, great acceleration. I want this guy. Because Dorrance Armstrong, we're getting no sacks. So I, I feel like Dorrance Armstrong, replaceable. Also scouted corners. Um, and we got a top five guy. Height, weight, speed. Three, um, you know, three important stats. Getting the beat. Man, press, zone. Who really cares about the catching? And then you look at the athleticism. Four, three, seven, four. We're at a four, three, one. So this is like a kind of draft. Like, honestly, I want two first round picks. I don't know if we can make a move. I feel like we, I mean, we could trust the mock drafts here, right? We were late enough. Like, really, the mock drafts only fuck year one. So, knowing what I want, knowing who I want, and knowing where we're picking. So, we didn't make the playoffs. So, we are picking at 17. So, we are going to have a chance at both of those players if we wanted to. So, I can go D end at 17. And the corner's going at 25. And that is that DN even going in the first round? Holy shit. Okay, so in a per there might be a shot here, fellas. That we go Watson at 25. And then I fucking trade up to the first pick of the second round and get the D. There's the map. That is how we turn this team around. Now that we're all excited, can't wait for that corner to be normal dev. I'm gonna say that right now. That's that's kind of been my luck lately. When we find like these top five true talent players, it's just there's no dev trade ever. It's just like they're going to be like a 78 normal. Which, I mean, you can't really complain about that, but... Fucker! You motherfucker, you lied to me! Oh, you motherfucker! I mean, is he even going to be available? He, he might still be in the second round. Maybe we stay with that plan. And we'll go Clay Andrews. He also, I mean, he looks good. He's not top five talent. A zone, B press, C man, five ten. Much in ah, Jesus Christ, the athlete athleticism, not the best there. But we'll go Clay Andrews. We get the dev trait. Hopefully that other corner is high rating normal dev, and you know, hopefully we don't get lied to again. And that D ends there in the second round. We'll trade up for him. All right, D N is still available. He's probably going right now. So we are going to trade up with the Cleveland Browns. To get this pick. Simple transaction. My second and third this year. To move up. Whatever it was. 15 spots. Give or take. Uh, my draft board shot after this. Anyways. But hopefully it all works out man. I can't believe the mock draft lied to me. But Steven Jackson looks like a beast. Give me a dev trait. Let's go. Look at that man. Oh, 6'7". 86 acceleration. 83 speed. 90 strength. Beast.
All right, look at our draft recap. You already know we got to go look at, I don't know, honestly, the most important player from this class is the corner. We did not get Clay Andrews. Not a bad. We messed up. Let's pivot. 76, hidden dev, even though he's not 6'3 and have 4'3'1 speed. Uh, Steven Jackson, 75, hidden dev. We got Callaway, 75 in the fourth round, hidden dev out of Virginia. So that's some nice depth there. But, you know, Brian Robinson, come year five, he's probably going to start slowing down in terms of regression, so it's good having another running back back there. But let's see the – or A-plus draft, getting four guys – or three guys here at the top end that are high, high-level players. Is this the guy? 6'4". 6-3. He ended up going 78. Please be star def. That was way early, though. Mock draft way off on that one. It's only a star, so, you know, two-point difference. It's not as bad as it could have been. It's not like he's 81 X-Factor or something like that. At midway point, oh, same kind of thing, man. We were like, it was early. We were 3-0, and now we're just on a losing streak. and. <sighs> Got to figure it out, man. We're on a two-rebuild losing streak on top of just this losing streak in this. Um, Got to figure it out. I want to keep Martin around just because he is a player that his rating doesn't fluctuate too much between corner and safety. So if at any point there's some regression or whatever, I think we should be able to... It's just versatility there. Um, I don't like that contract for Luvu. Get up there in age a little bit. He's one of the bigger name players so we started with. Let's see if we can get him maybe on a two-year. He's probably going to want the three-year contract, but we'll see. But at these numbers, I just like, hey, so he wants, I don't want it. I'm not giving you three years. You're 29. You're going to regress this offseason to probably like a 79. And by the end of that contract, you're going to be here. You're going to be expensive. And you're going to be like a 73. So I think we're going to gamble maybe finally we'll get a good role in free agency i think that i think that's been the common thing the last couple rebuilds we've done that have been l's free agency has been fucking terrible like there's no it's it's very difficult like that's the reason why that's like a challenge rebuild where it's like no free agency draft only rebuilds because it's fucking hard to win like that and that well, that's just kind of spewing over to me just trying to do a regular rebuild where i'm willing to spend in free agency there's no restrictions there's no house rules and there's just no one there to improve the team and if they are there they're 34 years old and on the downswing, of the, it's been, ah. Uh, hopefully we get a good roll. And then if you're three, we got the playoffs. We didn't collapse. Ten and seven. We get the final right away. The best team is in the NFC. Dallas playbook against Dallas playbook. That could be interesting. Jane Daniels, Dak Prescott have been crushing it. 4,600 yards, 32 touchdowns, four picks for our quarterback, who is playing like a 97 overall X factor. So you couldn't really have expected anything better for Jane Daniels to start. 14 touchdowns there, Brian Robinson. Scary Terry McMillan and Dotson all over a thousand yards. What an offense! You can facilitate three thousand yard receivers. Uh, we got sacks are, are up a little bit. Payne with ten, seven and a half. Chop Robinson, seven and a half. John Allen, only two from Stephen Jackson, our second round pick, who has a star dev. It's part of his dev traits. On the interception front, got a couple picks there. I wonder what the dev trait is of our corner, Mr. Andrews. Did he play enough to even no? And kind of buried on the depth chart there. You love seeing that in your first round pick. Barely seeing the field. Um, MVP, by, uh, you know, Jay Dale's top three. We're getting there. You might get it before we're all said and done, which would be pretty cool. A lot of Cowboys. All right, we're just going up against uh, the super team here. That's winning all the awards. No worries. Jackson was third place in defensive rookie of the year. I don't like how slowly things are loading. All right, so Dallas just has the super team. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, let's beat them. I mean, anytime we're that team, anytime that's if that was Commanders in all of those spots, we'd be like, oh, we're gonna, you know, it's too good to be true. We're gonna lose our first game. So hopefully Dallas is feeling the exact same here, as we have our first playoff appearance in three years, and we beat them. Look, the pressure was too much. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven. We defeat the Cowboys and get the first playoff win of the Jaden Daniels era. Outduels Dak Prescott. Well, not really. Honestly, played a worse game than Dak Prescott. Um. Made some plays with his legs, 50 yards on the ground. McMillan, just size, mismatch, scary. Terry got after it on the defensive side of the ball. Payne and John Allen with sacks. We'll take it. Absolutely, we'll take it. We move on to the next round, take on the one seed, the L.A. Rams. So I don't know if they still have Aaron Donald. Hopefully he retired like he did IRL, but I don't think so. Look at Naku up to an x factor. Jesus Christ. All right, we'll auto-spend our upgrade to make sure we get our best team out here. Best team forward. Come on. Come on, doggy. You can't 
beat the Commanders. I'm trying to think, what's that stupid Commanders song they have? Oh my god, another one point win! What a run! 28 points by the Rams was not enough because we got 29. Jaden Daniels, 293 yards, four touchdowns, 40 yards on the ground. We have won two playoff games by a combined two points. And we are one win away from the Super Bowl. We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So you look at pretty good defense. Borderline top five defense. They run the football very well. Yeah, Antoine Winfield Jr. crushing it. Honestly, not, even, not really. He doesn't have a lot, any interceptions. But point remains to say he's probably in terms of rating. He's probably in the high 90s, if not a 99. Can we go? This I would say Cinderella run, considering that we were collapsing year one and year two. Fuck, and it's a close. I mean, we're right there. We were two. I mean, we were two points away of losing in the first round and not going to the championship game, but we were two points away from going to the Super Bowl. So I think the team's in a pretty good spot, all things considered. Another play of the week performance with Jaden Daniels, so he is good enough to carry this team. We just get again. Give me a free agency. Let me sign those one two guys that can put this team over the hump. So look at our squad at season's end as far as dev traits. No one up or down on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, Deron Payne makes a jump from superstar up to an X-Factor, which is nice on the interior. We lost, unfortunately, the superstar dev on Jeremy Chin. I think that might be more of an age thing than it was performance-based. Okay. I mean, get going into free agency. We could use it. I, mean, I don't really know what we could need. If there's like a big upgrade at center or guard, sure. On the defensive side, I guess a middle linebacker, just because we're letting Luvu walk. So linebacker is going to be a pretty big need to pair with Jamin Davis. You know, a, a true X-factor upgrade at corner. Like, if we get a guy that's like Traveris Ward last year that actually has somewhat interest, not where I have to pay him extremely team, you know, ex extremely player-friendly contract to get him signed, that could be a big upgrade. But linebacker is definitely our biggest need. Not only did we get fuck all, not only did that happen, okay? Not only... But the best linebacker is the guy we <laughs> we let. I mean, we could bring him back. I at least try to bring him back. But my God, it's a joke at this point. How bad free agency's been. So I, yeah, we'll bring back Luvu. I need a center. Can we let Biadish walk? He's also the best center. Uh, I think we probably just dropped the center earlier on. But man, oh man, this it's just it's not like I'm withholding information. Not looking, like it's just fucking terrible. Absolute dog shit free agency. All right, well, pick 29. We're going to need a center. It's where we're... Oh, my God, man. I don't know. This is one of those, like, ones where, like, the... the takes two to tango in a rebuild like this, and it feels like I'm doing all the strutting, and we're not getting much help from our dance partner. But looks like we're getting... I mean, there's a couple great swings here for guys that could potentially be centers. Uh, we got Terrell Talbot out of Georgia. Three A's, A pass block, B run block. Not a not a bad combine. Not great, not bad. Or we just go with the top center, which is McKinney out of Virginia. He looks pretty good. Three A's and a B. Yeah, we'll go with this guy. Let's go. Talbot's still there. I don't even know if I need an interior guy, but he looks like the next best player available. We'll get two in-depth linemen. Is that, guys, is that getting you guys going? Huh? No big time free agency signings. We're getting some interior linemen with our premier picks in the draft. That's this, this is going right to the top of trending on YouTube. All right, looking for a draft recap. 72 and 75. Let's go. Oh, shit, I'm just kind of putting things X in the corner. We got to X Factor. Fuck yeah. That's what we need. That's a needle mover move right there. First round pick didn't play X Factor. Let's go. All right, midway point here, number four. And. You know, this is the only time I ever... I can play a lot in the offseason so far with the roles. But this is a time that I feel good about it because, hey, look at all these players. They're all staying with us as long as we want them to. So we're going to go Chop Robinson, part of that first draft class. Patrick Paul, part of that first draft class. Sign. We haven't had to worry one damn bit about any of our players so far. We got Emmanuel Forge, get him locked up for three years. Now, Theo Johnson, John Allen, those are definitely uh, players of need. But I think with these guys, you're going to look... I mean, Theo Johnson right there, he's been solid, but does he justify a four-year, $40 million deal? I don't know. I'm very much undecided. Definitely want to get John Allen. We're going to get more money at the end of the year. We can restructure some contracts. Uh, I think we want to keep both of them. I'm going to say, let's put this right now. Theo Johnson, I want 750 and 5. But all is said now, you give me 750 yards, 5 touchdowns, I'll throw a little Canadian bias your way, 
and we'll extend you. And obviously, John Allen, we want to keep him here. We want to make sure he retires a commander. All right, so at the end of year number four, we've still yet to win the East. We had a good record, though, 11-6, very competitive East. We make the playoffs. We've got the 49ers, so we're hoping to go on another superstar Cinderella all-star run. The reason why I talk about superstar is, well, oh, well. Felt a little bit of a wet fart getting two linemen, but look at McKinney, our first-round pick, center superstar dev. That's pretty much like getting an X-Factor anywhere else because superstars are the best you can get on the line. So that is huge. That's a great get. That's about as sexy of an interior lineman pick that you can make. Um, you know, we got Jane Daniels up to the 99 club, which is good. McMillan's been crushing it defensively. You know, definitely got a great role there drafting the X-Factor. I mean, that, that couldn't have worked out any better. Want the corner, thought we we're going to get the corner. Mock draft lied to us, had to pivot last second to the second best corner, which wasn't a perfect fit. Didn't play at all his rookie campaign. Oh, he's an X-Factor. So, we, you know, we kind of fell ass backwards into that one, but pretty happy with it. And, I mean, really looking at our roster going into year five, depending on what happens this playoff run, we just got to get, you know, John Allen re-signed. Let's go see if Theo Johnson, I said 750 yards, five touchdowns, would get him a new contract. Jaden Daniels played well, 4,100 yards, 32 tutties. We got a uh, 10 and 10. Oh. Sorry. Uh, you know what? There's extra money. I'll bring back Theo Johnson. But right now, all of our money that we can scrounge up is going to we'll go towards... Uh, repaying John Allen, 13 and 10 for Scary Terry, 1,000 for McMillan, which you'd love to see. Defensively, a lot of tackles, sacks. I mean, for a Dallas Cowboy playbook, very disappointed with the sack numbers. Thought we'd get some guy that can, you know, hey, Chop Robinson, can we get a little Micah Parsons out of you? Has him, and he's developed nicely once he's up to a 91. 91 boosted, but haven't got anywhere near Micah Parsons like numbers with this defense for Dan Quinn, unfortunately. Look at the early awards. MVP goes to Dak Prescott. Jaden Daniels making the top 10 shortlist for individual awards. It's all Dallas Cowboys again, or New York Giants, or Philadelphia Eagles. Holy fuck. We're the only team that has been good, but still fails to the rest of our division. Here in year four, we start the playoff run against San Francisco 49ers. We were a two points away from making the Super Bowl last year, and here we are one and fucking done against the Niners, even though Jaden Daniels tried his best with 400 yards passing, three touchdowns, the rest of the team sucked ass, and we're going for a year five Super Bowl or bust. But at least we saw last year, this team can get hot and go to a Super Bowl. We got to hope to God we can get that year five. All right, so to get everything going here, we are going to need to trim a little bit of fat. So unfortunately, that means Mr. Brian Robinson, you are going to be gone to free up some salary cap space, and we're going to go with Jamichael Callaway, same rating as our new starting running back. We threw a lot of restructures around, which gives us $46 million, which should be enough here to get John Allen on a one-year. With 23 remaining, we're going to be able to get Theo Johnson, because you know there's going to be no one in fucking free agency. Anyways, that's worth signing. All right, just because just we got money, James Cook isn't available, free agent. And, uh, you know, sure. There's our big signing of the rebuild, James Cook. So after the big addition of James Cook, uh, we're really in like BPA. I think I'm looking at my team. I just got it. There's a really fast wide receiver. That's That was the exciting player that I found. There's a nice looking safety. I mean, we're stacked in terms of like, you know, now we're just trying to find guys. We have a deep right. When I saw he had a deep right running and he went ahead and ran with the elite speed, uh, elite acceleration, great speed, 4 2 8. Let's go with the fast guy. 98 acceleration, 95 speed. And we'll just, you know, add a little competition there with Jahan Dotson. And we got a replenish linebacker room. We got Matt Clifton here. Three Bs, elite speed. Usually all you need to see. Hell yeah. Look at that, man. 91 speed middle linebacker. And look at our final house. Is it enough? Take this team over the hump. Well, we got Sykes 76 burner, Clifton 74, both hidden devs. Both likely going to be day one starters. We got Sharif Mayweather, Hindev, uh, nose tackle, just a cheesy nose tackle pick. Um, so yeah, feel I mean that's good. Good draft class, three impact playmakers, three Hindev rookies. So year five, this is our final piece of work here for this Commanders rebuild. Jay Daniels, ninety nine. We got James Cook now in the backfield. McMillan has overtaken Scary Terry as wide receiver one. That's, uh, that was quite the hit. I mean, just, you know, if I had to say what's disappointing the offensive side of the ball, I definitely thought Jahan Dotson would be a bigger player for us. But generally, the offense has been great. It's been the defense that's been non-existent this whole freaking rebuild. Uh, we'll go Talbot, just a higher ceiling. I imagine he would be a higher rating at the end of the year than Rattledge would be if we let him start the whole year. 
Uh, but, I mean, I think we've done a hell of a job on the offensive side of the ball. Drafting and developing and ending up getting an X-Factor quarterback, superstar wide receiver, superstar center. Defense, I think we've done a, we built a nice defense. It's just the production, for whatever reason, has not been there. You know, 84, 87, 88, 92. Chop Robinson's developed nicely. Um, we'll go Clifton as a starter there at linebacker. Luvu, Davis, Jeremy Chin, Derek Four. So we've kept a lot of original pieces. Sprinkled it in X Factor corner out the gate. I mean, this team needs to be like, I've. Not a super team. We've had teams that are 94, 95, 96 overall. This is 87 overall. It's a, it's a somewhat. Humble team. Like, what are the what are the uh, the individual ratings here? Offense going to be in the 90s. Wow, not even. You know, to be honest, that, that's not. This is definitely not one of the better teams we've rebuilt. 86 overall is on the lower end, but I still think, you know, this team's good enough to go win a Super Bowl. This team's good enough at minimum to win the NFC East once. All right, and we close out year five, 14 and three. Our first NFC. East title and what I just took a little peek at. So last draft class, we've drafted well. We've drafted a superstar center, a star right guard, a star tight end. Obviously, again, some of these guys have developed, but X Factor quarterback, superstar wide receiver. We've done it the right way. Star tackle, that's almost up to a 90. But on the defensive side of the ball, on top of all that, on top of the X Factor corner, Clifton, the linebacker. X Factor. I mean, I don't know how much more we need to do, man. We have done everything possible, especially with the role of free agency, to make this team as good as we possibly can. And we're still staring down the barrel. We had one good year. Year three, very close to a Super Bowl appearance. Every other year hasn't been particularly close. We kick out this year in the wild card against the Carolina Panthers, who have a really good passing offense. Bryce Young's playing well. Their defense is pretty good. But look at that. We have the number two offense. Here in Washington, the number one defense. We are the team to beat. We have a lot of momentum. Finally having some confidence. But we can't. I mean, you know, that's that's a humble win. I was hoping we flex our muscles a little bit. That was a competitive game when I was really hoping it wouldn't be. 21-10 over the Carolina Panthers. In a game where Jane Daniels was modest. 195 yards, one touchdown, no pick. We had two uh, rushing touchdowns there for the back of McLaurin, Scary Terry, 92-1. I mean, he's a guy that would just been dying to have a big-time playoff run again. Steven Jackson, two sacks, sack and a half, Chop Robinson. A pick from Frankie Louvo. You know what? At any given second, we can lose. I'm going to get frustrated. So let's take a look quickly at the stats that we've been able to achieve in this rebuild. Who has done what in the five-year period that we have made the Commanders one of the better rosters, one of the more underrated rosters in the league? Jaden Daniels, just under 22,000 yards passing, 163 touchdowns and 35 picks. He has been exceptional. So I think, you know... This will do. This will do. If the Commanders go on and draft Jaden Daniels, I'm not going to need to redo it because this has been everything you could ask a Jaden Daniels Commanders rebuild to be. If they end up getting Drake May, we'll know that this is the pace car that we're able to achieve with Jaden Daniels developing him up to a 99 X-Factor who's put up some pretty big numbers. Has consistently been the top 10 for the MVP race. Uh, he also has almost you know 2,000 yards. I mean, I'll say that was surprising. I did not think we were going to get this kind of rushing numbers for the Commanders or, and or even Dallas Cowboy playbook. Um... But he's done well there, which is nice. On the receiving end, Scary Terry, 800 catches, 11, almost 12,000 yards receiving, 74 touchdowns, 5,300 yards, 40 touchdowns for Jahan Dotson, almost 5,000 yards, 43 touchdowns for McMillan, who's been awesome. Absolutely awesome. 3,500 yards, 23 touchdowns for the Canadian Theo Johnson. Defensively, Jobman Davis, 800 tackles. We got 74 and a half sacks, John Allen, 63, Jerron Payne, 39 and a half, Chop Robinson, and a direct force with 11 picks, 10 from Emmanuel Forbes. We'll say overall. If there had to be something out of this rebuild where I would make the argument that it's been a little bit disappointing. It also used to be the defense as a whole, man. The sacks haven't been there. The interceptions haven't been there. Like two things that the Dallas Cowboys defense are known for. Especially in Madden. Definitely interceptions. Interceptions very low. Like these look like freaking after two years what the Cowboys corners would have. Between Steph you know uh, Diggs and, and Deron Bland and et cetera, et cetera. But we just haven't been getting those roles. Maybe we don't have the right play. I don't know. Because I would say, we don't have the right place. we got X-Factor. We've got studs across the board on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, so ahead of our matchup here, the divisional round against Green Bay. Will Otto spend there? McMillan up to a 94. What a beast he has been. we got the Packers. What are the Packers looking like? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? The Green Bay Packers, pretty damn good across the board. Sixth-ranked offense, 10th-ranked defense. This is going to be a good one. 
Hopefully we don't lose. I'll say right now, it's Saturday. I'm recording this Saturday afternoon. It's 2 o'clock. So we're getting close to the cutoff of this needs to get uploaded. The videos, reviews are going to suck ass. I'll go. If we would have lost there and not even made the championship, I was going to say I would probably consider going to a year six type scenario. But I mean, we're at a spot now. We've had two swings at going to a Super Bowl. So, I mean, how many more opportunities? Like, it's not like we haven't had any opportunities. It's not like we've had just a barren five years and, and it's not doing this team justice. This team's now had two swings at going to a Super Bowl, trying to trying to get that check mark. If we can't do it, we can't do it. Now we have the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the question would be, do we cash in here in the championship game our three, let's hop in on the sticks, so at least we guarantee a Super Bowl appearance Thinking about it, Atlanta's tough. Atlanta is a good sim team, even though when we rebuilt them last week with Kirk Cousins, it was not the case. Atlanta's the number seven offense, number three defense. Who's on the other side of the bracket? I'm going to imagine like Kansas City, Cincinnati, or something stupid like that. It's Kansas City, Baltimore. Like if you play the Chiefs in Super Bowl, you do not want to sim that. That is going to be... Um... Ah, fuck, we'll sim this one. I like our, I like our chances. Come on, fellas. Come on! Do one thing right. Get me to a Super Bowl. I will try to help you get over the line. Yes, it's close. 24-22. A chance to not go three rebuilds in a row. With We got the fucking Chiefs in the Super Bowl, which sucks. That's a terrible roll. But at least we got a chance. Jaden Daniels, not a great game, to be honest with you. Not a bad game. Protected the football. He did have two touchdowns. Got the scrambling one there. James Cook was nice. Not much of a passing offense. Defense, two sacks. John Allen, a pick from Emmanuel Forbes. And now, standing between us and an unsuccessful rebuild is those goddamn Kansas City Chiefs. See what the Chiefs got? Well, Mahomes went 44 touchdowns, four picks. This is the number one offense against the number two offense. This is the number one defense against the number two defense. This is what the Super Bowl is all about. Let's go do it. This is honestly as two evenly matched teams as we've had in our, I can, that I can remember. So, as always, we can hop in three times on the sticks in a perfect world, even though, you know, it is cool to, you know, hop in to get a couple shot plays in. You love to see, like, your sim team handle business in the sim. But sometimes you get the freaking Chiefs in the playoffs, and you very much need the kick in the ass, which is hopping in and trying to help them out as Kansas City looks to try to pull away here in the first half. So we're going to come in two-minute warning. See if we can get a shot play. Hopefully they don't have Legereus Sneed. Hopefully he found a way to get on the Titans. Look, we got McMillan, and that is a short corner on him. I don't, I don't even know, need to know who that is. We're going to go to McMillan, who wins right off the line. Insta sheds 75. He gets Kool-Aid McKinstry, who does not have a lot of speed. That is a terrible size matchup. We will cash that in. We need that instant touchdown. Maybe we score too quickly. Down three. Come on. Just such a fucking bullshit matchup, man. We got a shot. Get a stop defense. Punt return. 40 seconds. You already know what we're going to do. Someone get pressed. Please, for the love of God. Not getting pressed. We got McMillan in the slot. That is a matchup. He's going to go against a safety and or a linebacker. We don't have any timeouts left. Get your block. Get out of bounds. That's a late hit. 15. Let's go! That should put us right in a field goal range almost. Borderline. Come on. Verts. Press. Just give me one press. Okay, they put... That's probably McDuffie. Again, size matchup. McDuffie's what? Under six feet tall. Oh! It's close. Anytime you have a 6'5 guy, it's almost 99 overall. I'm just, it's just, just take multiple shots. Technically, we only need to get in a field goal range, which we might have to take something underneath. Got the sideline. Terry McLaurin. That might get challenged. I don't think he kept his feet in bounds. 21 to 24 for Jaden Daniels. He is freaking throwing this thing. Uh, Scary Terry. Dados. Oh my god, that's safety in the middle. 
No timeouts! Quick! Snap the ball! Yes! Yes! We are champions! Check mark! Oh, right there! Holy, I can't believe it, Andy Reid! Jane Daniels zeroes on the clock, tucks it and runs. And the Commanders, year five, upset the Kansas City Chiefs in one of the most competitive, evenly matched Super Bowls I can remember. Jane Daniels can't believe it. That is how you cap off a rebuild, ladies and gentlemen. A rebuild that you did not, we didn't get anything handed to us. There was no layups in free agency to, to quickly improve this roster one way or another. Had to do it the long way. Had to develop the talent on the roster. Had to draft and find multiple players that either were or became X-Factor game changers for the defense. And that man, Jaden Daniels, might not have ever won an MVP, but was consistently playing MVP caliber football. And when we needed it most, he became the Super Bowl MVP, tucking and running after a pretty much perfect game Throwing the football, outdueling Patrick Mahomes, and the Commanders are Super Bowl champions. Thank you guys very much for tuning in to today's Rebuild. As always, let me know in the comment section below what team you guys want to see next. Obviously, with the draft upcoming after the draft, there's going to be a lot more Rebuilds to do. But on the way to the draft, there's any hypothetical scenarios you guys want to see play out. Any moves from free agents that you think makes a team really interesting to go rebuild. Let me know in the comment section below. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.